this uh, for the rim instruction so other bits like bits uh, 4 to 6 show whether or not there are pending interrupts on rst 7.5 6.5 and 5.5 line so bits 4 and 5 they return the current value of rst 5.5 and 6.5 pins bit 6 returns the current value of rst 7.5 memory flip flop so it you, you note here that for uh, bit uh, rst 7.5 we do not read the pin value because RST 7.5 is an edge triggered flip flop. So, if it may be uh, the, that edge is already gone. So, if you read the pin, so it, it does not have any meaning. And the pin, the edge the is already registered in the R7.5 uh, memory bit, RST 7.5 memory bit. So, that is already there. So, it is better to copy it from there. So, uh, these bits 4 to 6, so they are holding the pending interrupt uh, um, status. And bit 7 is for the serial data input. So, the RIM instruction, it reads the value of the SID pin on the uh, microprocessor and returns it in this particular bit. So, after, uh, so after executing the RIM instruction, the SID pin, whatever be the value, so that will come to the most significant bit of the accumulator. And then accumulator, so based on that, so we can, uh, we, we, we can, read, we, we can read the value uh, through the SI of the SID pin into the accumulator bit 7. Now, the pending interrupts uh, that we are talking about, so, say 8085 has got 5 interrupt lines and interrupts may occur during an ISR and remain pending. So, this can happen. So, using the RIM instruction, the programmer can read the status of the interrupt lines and find if there are any pending interrupts. So, this is the utility of this, uh, of this P RIM instruction. The advantage is being able to find about interrupts on RST 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5 without uh, having to enable low level interrupt like INTR. So, many a time what happens is that uh, maybe in my system RST 7.5 and 6.5 they are very important devices and 5.5 INTR the devices connected to those lines are not that much interrupt uh, the not, not that much important. So, uh, maybe I was servicing RST 7.5 and in between some 6.5 had occurred, but 6.5 having lower priority than 7.5, so it was not uh, act, uh, accepted by the processor. So, uh, this pending bit, so at the end of the 7.5 ISR, so if I check the pending bit, I will find that RST the 6.5 interrupt had come. So, I can directly branch to the 6.5 interrupt service routine from there. And uh, otherwise, what I have to do is I have to enable uh, all the interrupts again and uh, that may create uh, some chaos because now uh, many other interrupts may be pending on 5.5 and INTR lines and they will also come into picture. Okay? So, that has to be avoided. So, for that purpose this RIM instruction is useful. So, here is an example set the mask to enable RST 6.5 without modifying the masks for RST 5.5 and 7.5. So, uh, what we want is the current setting for 5.5 and 7.5 they should continue only the 6.5 setting should be uh, the 6.5 interrupt should be enabled. So, first of all we have to uh, do a RIM instruction to find the current setting of 5.5 and 7.5 masks. Then we can use the SIM instruction to set the masks using this information. So, this RIM and SIM instruction since they use the accumulator we can use some logical operations to mask uh, the uh, unneeded values. Uh, okay, to uh, the unneeded values returned by the RIM and SIM instruction uh, and uh, the, uh, by the RIM instruction and then turn the turn into the values needed by the SIM instruction. So, here is the example. So, you see we assume that RST 5.5 and 7.5 are enabled and the interrupt process is disabled. So, as a result uh, since uh, this IE is uh, uh, 0 and 7.5 and 5.5 they are not masked and this uh, uh, this is uh, uh, 6.5 is masked. So, uh, what we do do is the first we execute a RIM instruction that gives me the current uh, setting which is like this. And then we, uh, we want to uh, uh, we want to set the interrupt uh, mask in some fashion. So, for that we have to uh, set this uh, uh, we have to prepare for this uh, uh, SIM instruction. In the SIM instruction bit number 4 is the MAC the mask set enable. So, for whatever value I have got, so with that, so if I do an ORing with this particular pattern, okay, so then this uh, bit becomes equal to 1. Okay. So, the with this, so if you get do this ORing, so you get the bit number 4 set. 
whatever be the value that you read here so if you do all with the 08x so bit number 4 is set now what we want is that the serial data should be turned off so serial data turn off so, so, so this sde value should be equal to 0 sdo it is can be 0 or 1 it does not matter so it is uh, made 0 then rst 7.5 flip flop so that is uh, don't we don't want to reset the rst 7.5 flip flop so this bit is set to 0 and this rst 6.5 is uh, uh, turned off so the mask uh, and set the mask for rst 6.5 turn off so 6.5 uh, turn off is this one m 6.5 so that is made 0 and uh, do not care for the and, uh, and this and the mask for uh, do not reset the mask for the reset for RST 7.5 and set the mask for 6.5 off. So mask for 6.5 has been set off and do not care are assumed to be 0. So rest of the thing they will uh, be taken as 0. So this way we can uh, get uh, we can apply this particular setting. So when I do an and immediate with this so I will get this particular bit pattern okay? and this bit pattern when it is put into a sim instruction so it will do the desired thing that we want. So this way we can use this rem and sim instruction along with a few logical operations to set this uh, interrupt, live, uh, interrupt enable and uh, part, part, selecting some interrupt uh, pins and getting them um, uh, masked out or enabled so like that. Another uh, very important interrupt that we have not discussed so far is the trap. So this is the only non-maskable interrupt that 8085 has. So all other interrupts they are maskable, but trap is a non-maskable interrupt. So it does not have any effect. The EI and DI instructions so they will not have any effect on the trap line. So it does not need to be enabled because it cannot be disabled. It has the highest priority amongst all the interrupts. And in fact, so this trap is also uh, known as RST 4.5. So this trap is also uh, the RST 4.5. So when this trap occurs, then the, the processor will jump to 4.5 into 8, that is location 34. So sorry, location 36 in decimal. So th this will be uh, jumping to location 36. So that is um, between uh, this RST 4 and 5. So that is why it is called RST 4.5 and the corresponding address is 36 decimal. So uh, it has the highest priority among all the interrupts. It is age and level sensitive. So it is a combination of this age sensitive and level sensitive. So it is age and level sensitive. It needs to be high and stay high to be recognized. So since it is a very important interrupt, so this is often used for power failure or some emergency conditions. Now if there is a glitch that is coming on the power supply line and it is sensed as an interrupt, so that is that may be uh, undesirable. So what is uh, required in case of trap to be sensed is that it should be, there should be an edge as well as it should, uh, there should be, it should be high for quite some time for it to be sensed. So it is edge and level sensitive. It needs to be high and stay high to be recognized and once it is recognized it won't be recognized again until it goes low because it because of the nature that it it is it is age and level sensitive so that to bring that age sensitivity into picture so uh, once it is sensed it must go low and then only it can come high again so So next we will be uh, looking into the internal pri internal priorities that we have. So internally 8085 implements an internal priority scheme and these uh, interrupts are ordered like this. The trap has the highest priority followed by 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 and INTR. However, uh, trap has lower priority than the hold signal that is used for the DMA. So uh, DMA will come later. So this is for direct memory access. So for doing uh, some operation uh, data transfer directly uh, between memory and the secondary storage without involving the microprocessor. So for that type of operation we uh, need the direct memory access or DMA and this is uh, this hold and uh, hold acknowledge. So these are the two pins associated with that operation and uh, so they are there. So when the hold signal comes then what the processor does is that it really it, it releases all the buses. So it just as if it will not use any external bus. So it will stop all the operations. 
and the bus is uh, given to some other uh, master so that this data transfer to memory can take place directly. Uh, but this trap has got lower priority than the hold signal. So, uh, to summarize, so if you look into different interrupts, the mass cable, so this inter INTR, RST 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, they are all mass cable, so the trap is non mass cable. Masking method INTR is uh, DIEI, RST 7.5, 5.5 and 6.5, 7.5, so e DIEI and SIM trap cannot be masked, so there is nothing. So, this INTR is not vectored, so, uh, but remaining interrupts they are vectored interrupts because for them we know what is the address at which the execution the, uh, the interrupt service routine should be located. And uh, so, whether any of these interrupts have got memory, yes RST 5, 7.5 has got a memory, others do not have. So, others they require that they, it should be high for the at 17.5 states for getting it sensed in the worst case. Triggering method, so we have got INTR level sensitive 5.5, 6.5 they are also level sensitive, 7.5 is edge sensitive and trap is level and edge sensitive. So, the, the edge should be there followed by it should be high for quite some time. So, this way this uh, 8085 interrupts uh, can, we can summarize they are different features. Next, we will be looking into another uh, important concept which is known as direct memory access. So, this direct memory access is a process where data is transferred between two peripherals directly without involvement of the microprocessor. So, it is like this that if we look into this uh, data transfer process between uh, any processor, so suppose this is our 8085 processor and uh, this is the memory. Okay. So, we have got uh, address data bus line connection and this 8085 is connected to some external disk, uh, external device which may be a hard disk for example. Now, if it is required that some data has to be transferred from this hard disk to memory, then what is required is that 8085, if, if I do, do it uh, through this um, 8085 processor, then what it will do? it will read values from this hard disk and then write something onto the memory, write the value onto the memory. Then again it will read the next byte from the hard disk and it will write the byte onto the memory. So, it will go like this. So, the, this is uh, this is known as the programmed I.O., programmed input output operation. Difficulty with this programmed input output operation is that this uh, the device, the I.O. device that we are talking about. So, they are generally much much slower compared to this uh, the, this processor like 8085. So, that uh, a good amount of time 8085 just waits for the for the device to be ready to transfer the uh, to give the next byte of uh, next byte of data and uh, so that 8085 can read it and transfer. So, that is the problem with the program diode. There is another type of um, data transfer which is known as interrupt driven IO. So, interrupt driven IO. So, it is like this that this uh, processor, so this uh, processor does not tell the device whether you are ready with the data. The device rather it gives an interrupt to the processor. Okay, so, it gives an interrupt to the processor telling that I am ready with the data. So, the 8085 goes into the ISR. So, in the ISR, one byte of data or some, some amount of data, whatever data this device is ready with, are read and they are put into the memory. So, the point is that now this processor, uh, otherwise, it is not waiting for the device to be ready. So, whenever the device is ready, so it will tell the processor by an interrupt and that interrupt will be uh, the in, in the interrupt service routine will be actually the data transfer job that is done. So, uh, again so this is an improvement over the programmed IO, but it is still not that much uh, uh, fast. So, what is done in the third possibility is known as the direct memory access or DMA. So, direct memory access so, we have got the 8085 processor, so we have got the memory, so this memory is connected to the 8085 processor plus there is another device which is known as 
the DMA controller or direct memory access controller. So, what this direct memory access controller does is when 8085 tells this direct memory access controller that I want to get some data transferred. So, this IO device, so this is connected to the DMA controller. So, this IO device is connected to the DMA controller. So, this 8085 tells the DMA controller that I want some data to be transferred from the IO device to the memory or vice versa from memory to the IO device. So, this DMA controller will do that job. So, it will do transfer the, the content to the memory. Okay. So, after so uh, this processor is free. So, processor can do anything else it wants to do. So, it is uh, if it uh, definitely it cannot use the memory, but it can do other computations that is within the processor and all. So, those type of cases uh, operations so it can do and the DMA controller will do the transfer and when it is done with the transfer, then it will again tell the um, uh, processor that I am done. Okay, I am done with the operation and then uh, this uh, 8085 will rest, uh, will uh, continue with the previous operation that it was doing. Now, the point that is to be noted is that for uh, reading or writing something uh, to and from memory. So, what we need is that the memory is address bus, uh, data bus and control bus. So, they are to be given proper values to the memory. Now, in this situation what is happening is this is memory has got two drivers, one of this address data control buses are coming from this uh, 8085 and in an another situation it is coming from the DMA controller. So, actually though I have shown it like this, but in reality the connection is like this, fine. So, we have got two drivers for the same bus. So, to, uh, to, uh, to solve the problem, so what is done? is that when 8085 tells the DMA controller that it will it wants some data transfer through DMA mode. So, it will release the control here. Okay. So, it will release the control of this bus and now this DMA controller will control this bus. And after some time when the transfer is over, when it is informed by the 8085 uh, to the 8085 that it is over, then this is this control is taken off and this control is re-established. So, that way this uh, whole DMA operation works and you remember that there were two pins hold and hold acknowledge, two pins of 8085. So, they were actually responsible for this DMA type of operation. So, we will see how this uh, um, hold hold acknowledge pins they are going to be useful for this transfer. So, this direct memory access is a process where data is transferred between two peripherals directly without the involvement of the microprocessor. So, processor is not uh, involved in the uh, in, in this transfer. The process employs the hold pin of the microprocessor. The external DMA controller sends a signal to on the hold pin. So, the, to the microprocessor that you, 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 you please release the uh, buses. And the microprocessor completes the current operation and sends a signal on the hold acknowledge and stops using the buses. So, it releases the buses that is that is what I was say, saying and once the DMA controller is done. So, it turns off the hold signal and the microprocessor takes back the control of the buses. So, this is how uh, this whole operation takes place by means of this hold signal. So, next we will be looking into the serial input output operation. Now, this uh, serial input output operation means that I want to transfer data serially, but uh, before uh, going to that, so the we, we want to uh, discuss uh, about the parallel, the, 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 the instead of parallel, the serial, the parallel IO transfer a bit. So, what happens is that, okay, so uh, this as I said that the programmed IO or interrupt driven IO, whatever you call it. So, ultimately, the device have the, the processor has to. Uh, read from the device or it has to write onto the device. Now, if I have got say if this is the 8085 processor and in this 8085 processor, so I have got some memory and this memory it ranges uh, over the addresses say 0 to say 6 k or say 16 kilobytes. So, 0 to 16 kilobytes. So, this range is uh, this range is uh, by the memory uh, by the memory. So, this address data buses are connected there 
by means of decoder and all. So, this is the address data and control bus connections. I am not showing the latches and uh, latches and all uh, uh, the uh, um, demultiplexing uh, de the address data bus and all. So, I am not showing it separately assuming that all those are there. Now, if there are a few devices connected uh, to this processor. So, this is device 1, device 2, device 3 like that. Now, these devices are to be also accessed. Now, this for accessing a particular device. So, the processor needs to tell what is the corresponding address. Now, while telling this address 8085 can do it in two different ways. The I O address that it is talking about it can be classified into two categories. One is called memory mapped address or memory mapped I O another is called I O mapped I O. In case of memory mapped I O, so what happens is that um, if this is the 8085 uh, processor and these are the memory chips. So, suppose I have, I have got two memory chips in my system M1 and M2 and we have got a few devices D1, D2, D, D, D3, etc. Now, this address decoder that I have the decoder, the address decoder. So, it has got some of the bits of the address lines and it is generating the enable signals for the memory chips. So, some of these lines may be connected to the enable signal of the devices as well. Fine. So, if I do this thing, then what happens is that uh, there is no difference between a memory location and a device location. So, as far as the processor is concerned, so it just needs to know what is the address of this device and that is what is so for a, for a memory location the address is 16 bit. So, uh, this device is also nothing but a 16 bit address. So, these are some special addresses that this uh, memory should that, that the processor should know. Like if I have an instruction like LXI uh, say if I have an instruction like move A comma M and before that if I if I do one LXI h comma some 16 bit value 16 bit address. Now, if this 16 bit ad address happens to be one loca uh, location within this memory chips m 1 and m 2, then this move a comma m instruction. So, it will read from the memory location and uh, get it into the 8085. On the other hand, if this 16 bit address uh, is such that the, the it, is, it is it is selecting this device then in the next move a comma m instruction. So, it will read from the device and get it into the memory. Similarly, if the 16 bit address is actually such that this decoder enables this line D 2, then this D 2 will be selected uh, the con that that content will be selected and put into the 8085 uh, accumulator. So, this type of operation. So, they are known as memory mapped I O operation because I O devices they are treated as nothing but some extension of the memory locations. Okay, so, this type of um, I O operation, so they are known as I O uh, sorry memory mapped I O operation. So, it is the access is exactly like the memory addresses. On the other hand, uh, if you look into this 8085 processor, so the, you, you know that there is another special pin which is known as I O M bar. So, whenever the processor is doing this I O or uh, this memory operation, so it is making this I O M bar line equal to 0. Okay. So, that is uh, the, so, so far we have ignored this line, but we can use it for a uh, special purpose like we can uh, make it like this. So, uh, say this is the 8085 uh, processor and here I have got the decoder corresponding to the uh, for the memory chips. So, this uh, decoder is dedicated for this uh, decoding of the memory like this. It this enables this, this enables this, so this enables this like that. So, we can have another decoder which we can dedicate for the I O devices D 1, D 2, D 3 like that. 
so this uh, uh, d1 these devices so they are enabled by this now the address lines so they go here as well as the address lines they come here but the io ember line that we have here so this io ember line is connected to the enable line of this decoder and the uh, the inverted version of that is connected to the enable line of this decoder fine now uh, the 8085 it uh, uh, so, uh, so for io operation so it has got another type of instruction which are known as in and out instruction fine so this in instruction is in and one 8 bit address and this out is out and 8 bit address so in 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 instruction what happens is that uh, it uh, it uh, reads from the data bus and the content comes to the accumulator register so whatever is available on the data bus comes to the accumulator register similarly the out instruction whatever be the content of the data uh, uh, accumulator so that is put onto the data bus line now this uh, uh, for this in instruction and out instruction this execution so this io ember line uh, bit, bit is equal to 1 whereas for the instructions like move a comma m where it is doing memory operation this uh, io ember line is made equal to 0 so this uh, this in out instruction for when they are executed this line is equal to 1 as a result this decoder is enabled and this decoder is disabled so it will not enable any of this uh, memory chips but it will depending upon the address that we have here so it will enable one of these devices and that device value so whatever will be the value put onto the data bus so all of them are connecting to the data bus all of them are connecting to the data bus so like this and this is connected to the data bus of the processor so this is the data bus of the processor now if i do this if i do this then uh, this is the data bus so uh, for this in out type of operation so it will get the data from these devices onto this data bus and that will come to the 8085 chip whereas for this uh, memory operation so it will get it from there so the, uh, uh, the point is that this in out instructions so they are operated in the io mode and they come under the heading called io uh, io mapped io because the io devices so they are having a separate decoder and they are having the, the io addresses are mapped separately but only difference is that in case of io mapped io uh, this uh, in out instruction the address bus is 8 bit so it is not 16 bit so you can connect up to 256 devices only now uh, but the advantage that we have is that this type of instruction so they have got uh, only uh, the length is only 2 bytes whereas if you are having some lda instruction lda a comma some 16 bit address which loads some uh, 16 bit uh, uh, value on uh, which loads some uh, look mem memory content to the address is this 16 bit value into the a register so this instruction is a 3 byte instruction Okay. So, that way memory mapped IO the instruction sizes are larger for IO mapped IO the sizes are small the sizes are 1 byte less and as far the operation is concerned so it takes less number of clock cycles because it has to read only 8 bits so, uh, so it is taking only 2 uh, machine cycles that is 4 plus 3 7 cycles whereas this uh, memory operation so it is going to take uh, some so this LDA instruction so this takes uh, 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 3 plus 1 4 uh, uh, machine cycles that is uh, 12 plus uh, the 9 plus 4 that is the 13 uh, 13 t states will be required for the lda instruction so that will be there so uh, that is how this memory mapped io and io mapped io is there and in case of uh, the uh, it is the user's choice of course we need some extra hardware in case of io mapped io but uh, um, we can do that we can use it for uh, doing the io operations at a uh, much lower cost as far as the execution time is concerned.